That's a, a wonderful question. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, there's a lot, a lot in there, but but some of the studies that you reference are, uh, in in my view, presenting a false option, where you either go with SLS and Orion, which, as you mentioned, is the government workhorse of the future for getting uh, to deep space, or you go with commercial. You have, you have one of two options, and if you spend over here, then you're not spending over there. Um, there's also a, you know, a false narrative that commercial can provide what SLS can provide, and the truth is it can't. Uh, there is not another single rocket in existence, or even close to being in existence, that can launch you know, 130, um, 130 uh, tons to, to low Earth orbit, uh, with a fairing size as, as large as, as SLS. It just it doesn't exist. Now, do we want it to exist? Absolutely. Do we support people who are trying to make it exist? Yes. Why? Because just like you said, we need them to be successful so that we can be successful. And the answer is the architecture of the future includes both. What we don't want to do is we don't want to turn over our access to deep space to a private commercial industry that has yet to build a rocket capable of delivering those, those objectives as, as you described. Um, so right now, SLS, I mean, there's hardware in Mashoud um, that you can go and touch. <laughs> We're getting very close. And I don't think anybody is going to beat the United States um, to, to launching SLS. Uh, if it proves out that others can do it for a lesser cost, we welcome that and we will buy those services because we need those services and but again there is a, I think an important um, a, an important thing that it, in, 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 the, in America's national interest to make sure that we have a, a national capability uh, un, unless and until commercial industry proves that it can step up and, and deliver on our behalf so it's a great question though